All right, Dan Orlovsky, <laughs> straight away. What's your I don't have reaction? a fire, right? Right, the fire. I don't it's have incredible. a roaring fire behind me. What's your reaction to that sound? Yeah, that Aaron Rodgers is done playing football in Green Bay. I don't think he's done playing football, though. I, I do believe that Aaron Rodgers is going to play this year. It's just going to be not at Lambeau Field. Also this, yes, it's your life, and it is your decision, but there's a butterfly effect to a lot of that decision, and there's teams that are sitting there waiting on your information. Are you going to play? Are you not going to play? And it can't just be, well, this is me and only me. And this has to be something where you are conscious of the ramifications of other people waiting on that decision. And I think this too, like if I was a team sitting here, if I'm the New York Jets sitting here waiting on Aaron Rodgers, I have to figure out, am I ready to bring Aaron and everything that Aaron is into our locker room? I think that's become more of a focus point from, from my vantage point over this last week or two. And I was listening to J.J. Redick talk about the NBA and load management the other day on first take and how the, the young players in the NBA are coming to a different culture than they did 20 years ago. That's a young culture in New York. Are, is your locker room ready to take in everything that Aaron is? You're not just taking in a, a player. You're taking in certainly a presence that is ab very abnormal to NFL locker rooms. It's very different. And I think that the Jets or the Raiders, whoever else, has to sit down and figure out, are we really capable of taking on everything that Aaron is going to bring with him? Yeah, that's a great point. In some ways, if he joins the Jets, it becomes, in some ways, Aaron Rodgers' team. And you wonder yeah. what that impact is. Graz, what are you hearing about Rodgers and Indy? Yeah, look, I think there's a lot of feeling around here. Of And, and nobody knows what Aaron is going to do. Like No one knows it's, been, it's in his head. Uh, in spite of how many words he gives us about it uh, on a weekly basis. But I think the feeling is that the, from the Packers' end, they may be asking themselves the kinds of questions that Orlovsky was just talking about, the Jets asking themselves, right? Like, is it, ti is it time to do something else? The rest of the Packers' roster is very young. Yeah. Putting Jordan Love in and letting him grow with that roster, I, I think there's some temptation to that idea. So the Packers and Aaron Rodgers need to get together Everybody put their shoes on and have a conversation about what he wants to do, what they want to do, because then it becomes complicated. When do they trade him? Can they get it done before the draft? It's easier on the Packers if they wait till after June 1st. His contract right. and, and the way it's written and laid out make it a complicated deal. So the, the sooner the better on, uh, on figuring out where he's going to end up and how. Yeah, it's an important point there. Now, Mike T., the other side of this is we talk about Aaron Rodgers maybe wanting out, maybe Green Bay moving on. But if Aaron Rodgers wants back in Green Bay as a GM, what are you telling him? We need you right now. We need you in March, April, and May. Our offense got better month by month last year. We have two really young receivers that we love in Christian Watson, a second rounder, and Romeo Dobbs, a fourth rounder. But the $60 million guarantee that we're paying you, look, of course, we're paying you to play quarterback, but it's also about being the leader of this team and increasing and enhancing continuity. We all want to get to the same place. We want to be champions. And the best way to do that is to formulate the best possible continuity in the offseason. So if you're in, you're all in. And candidly, I think they have a much stronger hand, Ryan, than they did a year ago because Jordan Love is yeah. an improved player. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah, I think like, – I agree with Mike T. It's all in. You know, in hearing Aaron's comments, while they are 100% fact that he said, you know, in 2019, Matt LaFleur's first year, he was wondering what they were doing, and then they draft Jordan Love, his replacement, he goes and wins the MVP twice. But if you're the Packers or you're all the, these other teams that are interested, at some point it has to be about the win. Like, at some point, it has to be about we are – if you're the Jets and you're going to give up assets and trade for him, yeah, I'm not doing that just so you can go play good football. I can go get Derek Carr to play good football. I I'm trading for you to lead us to a championship, and we can't be led to a championship. And actually, Mike T was saying this last offseason, and so did Marcus Spears, and I was wrong on it, that, like, you got to be here, man. Like, you got to be there in March when no one wants to be there in April. you got to be a part of all this stuff because we can't win a championship. And I go back to when Tom left New England and Tampa Bay and, and the stories of breaking into parks. Like, we need that version of you, you know? And I, I think that – I think these, these organizations have to sit back and understand that you're not just trading for and or paying a guy to play the position. You're trading for a, a guy that's basically like a walking icon right now. And I was thinking about this this morning, Mike T. A lot of us are tired about talking about this. 
and I would want to get a feel and a general manager, what's my locker room feel like? It are, are there mm. young players in locker rooms? I know, and be like, yo, come on, man. Like at some point, you're either with us or you're not. But I think context is everything here, Dan. You're making a lot of great points, which is if I'm the Jets, I am paying the Aaron Rodgers tax much the way we at the Jets paid the Brett Favre tax a decade ago because we felt we could win a championship with Brett Favre to beat Tom Brady. If you're the New York Jets and all your points are well taken about, you're bringing in an icon with a lot of noise. But if I'm the Jets, I'm paying that price because the alternative right now is no doubt. Mike White. If I'm the Packers, again, because Jordan Love is an improved player, and if we believe in our process, we traded up for Jordan Love. That's how this whole thing started. I have to make that move at some point, and I'm making that move now so Jordan Love can grow old with Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs. And, oh, by the way, by May 1st, you have to decide if you want Jordan Love Mike, the year you, after. Are you giving, um, are you giving him a, like a time frame ultimatum? Are you I, saying, hey, we need to know my March 6th or, or, or we move on type thing? In, in the nicest way possible. I'm just going to say, look, we've had an unbelievable run. <laughs> You're an all-time great, Aaron. But if you want to move on, it's in your best interest and our best interest to know now, not in June. Wow, in the nicest way possible. Graz, I'll give you the last word. Yeah, I mean, it's a couple things about the situation. Aaron Rodgers' contract does not include a no-trade clause. The Packers could operate this thing on their timetable if they wanted to. Now, of course, he could complicate things, as is his want. But they, they, if they decide to move on, then I feel like this thing moves pretty quickly because he'll want to know where he's going, uh, et cetera. Mike T, of course, knows that it's a, it would be a, a, a contravention of the collective bargaining agreement to try and compel a player to do off-season uh, work. But it would be interesting to find out whether what Aaron didn't like about that was Green Bay. Non-negotiable. Or, <laughs> or, whether, uh, or whether he just doesn't like doing, uh, showing up in May and June for the voluntary stuff. Lots to work out if you're interested in Aaron Rodgers. Boy, that is GM 101. He, he, Eric did a great job there. Look, he's in a contentious negotiation, has been for over a year, and basically saying we love Lamar Jackson and we think Cleveland's crazy for giving Deshaun Watson $230 million fully guaranteed. And hopefully there's something in the middle. But, Lamar, we're not giving you what you want, and hopefully you're a raven. And I think Eric DaCosta did a great job yesterday. So basically it's GM speak for we're not giving you a full guarantee. I got it. <laughs> All right, so, <laughs> Dan Graziano, what are you hearing about what they're doing, where this stands? Well, they've talked, but there's no indication that they've made any significant progress toward a deal. Tuesday is the next pressure point. Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern is the deadline for teams to decide whether to use the franchise tag on players. If there's no deal by then, as I would expect there will not be, uh, the Ravens will certainly franchise Lamar Jackson. And then the question becomes, which franchise tag? And Eric DaCosta referenced this yesterday. You could put the non-exclusive tag on him, which is cheaper, but allows other teams to take him away from you if they're willing to part with two first-round picks to do it. You could put the exclusive tag on him and prevent that from happening, but then it costs you another, another 10, 12, 13 million against your salary cap while you continue to work this out. So Tuesday will be a big day to see what the Ravens do and then how Lamar reacts to it, uh, given that the They'll then have another five months to work out a deal before the season starts. Okay, so more intrigue possibly coming up. So, Dan Orlovsky, yeah. I look at this and I say, and Dan, you broke it down perfectly, exclusive versus non-exclusive. So, if they give him, say, the non-exclusive tag, how does that end up impacting Lamar and these negotiations in this team? Uh, I mean, I would feel disrespected if I was Lamar if I got the non-exclusive franchise tag because you're basically saying – we're going to tag you, but if somebody else wants to give us a ton for you, then they can come and take you off of our hands. And to my – and I want N Graz and Mike T to make sure I'm accurate that this is less money, non-exclusive, more than the yes. exclusive. Yes. And you're less. giving me less money on the tag. I think, like, when I, when I hear Eric DaCosta talk and when he says the phrase, I want to do what's best for the club, the reality is this, what's best for the club financially is not what's best for the player, but it is to keep Lamar – what is best for the club? What does Lamar want? That's, I, I, we, we don't know that really right now. Like, is it just the contract? Is it just the contract or is, is Lamar sitting there going, I want X amount of dollars and I want Odell Beckham Jr. Like, I, I'm tired of playing quarterback without a premier receiver. I look in this conference and Patrick Mahomes has got guys and Justin Herbert's got guys and Joe Burrow in our division's got guys. I need a guy. And I think what w would be nice for us is to figure out what exactly Lamar wants outside of the money. But if I was Lamar in his camp and they gave me that non-exclusive tag, I would feel a little bit disrespected because – do you want me here? Do we really want to get this done? That, that's totally ahead, not the case. 
Look, if someone wants to pay anybody the top five of any profession, they're not being insulted. And by the way, Dan, like, let's be very specific here. The villain in the story is going to be the market. So if he gets the non-exclusive tag, he could go out and solicit offers from 31 other teams, and they could decide how much Lamar Jackson is worth. And then Baltimore could simply match or not. And I think if I'm the Ravens and I'm Eric DaCosta, I would put the non-exclusive tag on because something else that's going on is deal fatigue. You've been dealing with this now for over a year. And to me, the villain in the story is, hey, let the market decide. We can't agree on terms. And then we'll either match or not match. Dan Graziano, help me understand this, right? So yeah. if you put the non-exclusive tag on, yeah. you can go out and solicit offers from other teams. The Ravens right. all this time, it seems, have been balking at the guarantee. So what if some other team steps right. up and says, hey, we'll give you exactly. $250 million guaranteed? Right. The Ravens would have right of first refusal, which means if they match the offer – Right. He would stay there. And if they don't, then he goes to that other team and that other team sends Baltimore two first round picks. So that's exactly what Tannenbaum's talking about. The market would decide if you're the Ravens and you're going, hey, Lamar, we don't think the market bears what you're asking. But if you find out that it does and you come back to us, you win. Right? Maybe we will give you that deal. But right now we don't feel like we have to or we don't feel like we should uh, in absence of, of something like that telling them otherwise. So, Orlovsky, real talk here. How does that make you feel if you're Lamar Jackson? Yeah, I mean, breaking it down after Graz and, and Mike T broke it down, I, I get the, the, the financial kind of semantics of it. I just think at some point the organization has to meet the player in the player's camp and say, we're going to get this done. We, we, we really – like, it's easy to say you want me here until you, it comes down to the money. And I think Lamar has got to be very clear with what his goals are in Baltimore to Baltimore. Is it just the money or is it winning the Super Bowl? Is it giving them the best chance to win the Super Bowl? Patrick Mahomes' salary is going to be the seventh most expensive in football next year at quarterback. Seventh. Yep. Seventh. Okay? So th mm. that is a very real part of this conversation that both of these parties need to figure out. Yeah, another real part. How's Lamar feeling about all this, even if he does go yep. out and solicit offers on a non-exclusive tag? Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.